Okay, here we are once again, New York Stilo, with a quick video. Big shout out to all my subscribers and those of you who are just tuning into my videos. This here is just a quick video to show you some of the stuff that I've ordered online to battle one of the most important nutrients to keep under control in your aquarium systems, which is phosphates. Now, Recently, I've, I, I have a phosphate problem, and I discovered the reason why I was having a phosphate problem. Um, as you can see in my system, I don't know if you can see it. I'm going to try to take a flashlight, but I'm getting a lot of algae blooms. Um, algae is actually starting to grow in the sand, and this is really not a good thing because it's an indication that the phosphate levels is binding to the sand. And this is definitely not a good thing, especially since I've got some SPSs on the system and therefore I've taken the um, the steps necessary to prevent this phosphate from taking a hold of my aquarium. So Let's look at this here. As I've stated in my previous videos, I went ahead and I purchased a Fossman Reactor 150. This is very inexpensive. This was like 43 bucks. In, um, in order for it to work properly, you have to get the right amount of flow to go, to go through the Fossman Reactor. And to power the Fossman Reactor, I've gone ahead and I purchased a MaxiJet 600. This is about 160 gallons per hour, although the flow that is recommended for you to flow through the false band reactor is approximately 30 to 40 gallons per hour. And for that reason, it comes with a ball valve for you to control the flow that comes into the false band reactor. Now, I've owned this system before, this, this, this false band reactor, I had it with my first saltwater fish tank in 2004 and I always ran it with false band media now because of the reviews I've done some research online and they I just got really incredible reviews when it comes to the use of this media which is called roll Foss. it's different than the false band I've never used it before I'm gonna go ahead and do a video on the proper way to rinse this media before you add it to your tank because if you don't then you will get a bunch of brown reddish type milky stuff in the water that can last up to days although it's safe to use in your aquarium it's very unsightly and it can take a while for it to be removed so with the um, maxi jet I've gone ahead and I've purchased about six to eight feet of half inch tubing because just in case I need extra tubing to plumb the uh, um, reactor aside from the phosphate the phos the phosphate reactor just to take a preventive measure and make sure that I am not the one that's introducing phosphates into the tank I've gone ahead and I've purchased the first two stages of my RODI filter now, if we look here at my RODI, I've actually taken it off the wall, and you can see the first stage is just really filthy. It's almost black. It takes a while for it to get like this. I haven't really changed this media for the past two and a half months, almost three months. So the first stage is the sediment filter. I'll be replacing that. And the second stage is the carbon filter. I'll be replacing that to be 100% sure that I'm not introducing phosphates into the system. I've discovered that the problem with my system when it comes to phosphates is that there were actually some snails that were dead and decaying. Some of those big Mexican turbo snails in, in the back of my rocks. When I took it out, uh, you know, I, 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 I I was doing some, some maintenance on the tank and I took out the snail and, and I took a whiff at it and it smelled like shit. 
I mean, it literally smelled like death. So um, I, got, I went ahead and got rid of that. And I believe that that may contribute to the phosphate problem that I've got on my system. I've also ordered um, these two Aqualite mini compact fluorescent bulbs. They're 67K, which is more a, of a yellowing color. And it's excellent for algae growth. Now, on my on the uh, Aqualite Mini that I have there now, um, I have two bulbs in there that came factory, which is a 10,000K bulb and an actinic bulb. That's beautiful for when it comes to a fish tank or um, a small little tank where you want to get really nice uh, color when it comes to the water, but not for algae growth. I want more of a color that is closer to that of the color of the sun. So this little bag here is just um, little parts and pieces that comes with the Maxi Jet 600. I've also ordered extra three quarter inch tubing and this is for another project that I'm going to show you guys on a, on a future video where I'm battling high and low pH problems. Okay, I'm going to need this tubing. I'm not going to go into that because this is mostly for the phosphate video section. I'm going to, I'm going to go into that in future videos. And this is just, this here is just um, little plastic hose clips that are very effective in holding the tubing at to the pump area I, I needed to purchase some three quarter inch ones and some half inch ones so that i can properly secure some of the tubing that's in the return pumps and this is it um this is very inexpensive i spend like a few dollars in this equipment here um one of the many battles that you have to face and go through and solve when it comes to having an aquarium especially a saltwater aquarium and especially when you plan on having SPSs in your tank so stay tuned for my next video where I will be showing you guys how I flush this system out clean the media and then install the unit to the tank and Let's see how quickly this media can reduce my phosphates to zero. So this is New York Stilo once again with a quick video. Stay tuned for the next one. New York Stilo signing out. Peace.